Okay, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you all yes, hear me? Okay, so we'll be discussing the principles of management of urethral structures. Now, this um, slide has been uploaded in, like, in file share. So you check in file share, you see the thing. Um, um, so we'll start now. Um, this lecture was delivered some time ago. I just changed the date. It's a postgraduate lecture, but I will not go into postgraduate level. I'll discuss that level of, of undergraduates. And I'll use this outline in, having, in taking this conversation. Now, urethral structure is it's narrowing of the lumen of the urethra, which can result from healing of an injured urethra by fibrosis is predominantly a male disease um, or which most cases of urethral section are male uh, presentation generally male presentation and this this is this is quite understandable because the female urethra is very short while right? the male urethra is about 16 to 20 cm so it's more prone to injury from all sorts of conditions now, um, urethral structures it can either be partial or complete. By partial, by, by partial urethral structure simply means that urine can still flow through the urethra, but at a diminished rate. While for complete urethral structure simply means that flow of urine from the bladder through the through to the urethra to the internal environment is completely blocked. And the problem with this either partial or complete is that ultimately it can lead to destruction of organs of the, of the body, particularly the kidney. Hence, it's very important that this topic is, is discussed. Again, it's one of the commonest causes of urinary retention in tropical Africa. And the, the prevalence rate is about 0.6% of our Jewish population. Now this is a schematic diagram of the urethra. Now from here, this is the this is the prostate. Last time we talked about the benign prostatic hypertrophy, and um, from the bladder neck up to just exit of the prostate is the prostatic urethra. Remember, remember when we talk about benign prostatic hypertrophy, we talked about this usually at the at this transitional zone, and then you can grow to occlude the lumen causing urinary retention. Now from this, um, you just build the urethra to this distended part is the boba urethra. And here is the glanul is the pena urethra and this distal part is the glanular urethra. So these are the parts of the urethra. Now of importance for urethral structure commonly is usually at the boba urethra. And this is because the at this point for the male, the urethra angulates upwards, or it, it angulates upward, sorry, it angulates forward from the it, it causes directly from the um, bladder neck, pass through the prostate, they then course forward underneath the pubic symphysis. That angulation is, is prone to trauma from various means. There's also there's also dilatation of this boba urethra. This angulation plus this dilatation causes sluggishness of urine flow, and that can lead to urinary, uh, urinary tract infection, commonly seen in these conditions. The causes of, of um, urethral structures can be either congenital or acquired. Congenital causes simply means that the patient the problem occurred in utero and the patient is born with it. Common causes of this will, will be a pinhole meatus, external meatus, meaning that at that point at which the urine, urine comes out from the from the urethra and glands penis, that's the meatus. It's very narrow. It, it's called a pinhole. In that instance, we soon that can that narrowing that narrowing narrowing can cause 
can be a form of partial urethra um, structure. Then this structure can occur anywhere in the urethra congenital, congenital causes that is has called non miniature structures. The non congenital causes can be traumatic, can be post operative, can be inflammatory or infective. But the traumatic causes suggest from coming from urethra instrumentation when you try to pass a urethra catheter, an appropriate size, yeah, and sorry, an inappropriate size urethra catheter, commonly when the urethra catheter is too big for the individual that can cause injury to the um, urethra and then subsequently that that injury will heal with fibrosis and that fibrosis will now lead to narrowing. Some people they some some people usually pass in through some foreign object like more sexual gratification into their urethra. And in these instances these people can traumatize the urethra when they pass those foreign objects into the Urethra for sexual gratification, and that can lead to urethral sexual eventually. Urethral calcula, which is commonly called urethral stone, because of this, this nature, it can injure the urethra while trying to come, or while trying to pass out of the body, and that injury can heal, and the healing will lead to we heal by fibrosis, and that fibrosis can then lead to urethral um, structure. Some urethral procedures can cause urethral structures. For instance, the transurethral trans um, urethral resuscitation of the prostate, which is a common good standard of repair of uh, BPH, that that procedure can injure the urethra and can lead to eventually to urethral structure. Again, other inflammatory causes include gonorrhea, commonly gonorrhea, which can be acute or, or chronic. So gonorrhea is one of the commonest cause of urethra, common commonest infective cause of urethral structure. That less common cause include tuberculosis, schistosomiasis. Again, like we said, if you have a high urethral structure of cause that there's an injury, this injury will lead to, will lead to um, damage to the endothelial lining of the, so the epithelial lining of the urethra. An attempt at the repair of that, injury, of that damaged urethra is usually done by fibrosis. And that fibrosis, once it's laid, it keeps proliferating. And that process is called fibroplasia. And when it keeps proliferating, it will eventually now narrow the lumen of the urethra, thereby obstructing urinary flow. And when this is when this happens, we call it partial urethral structure. Then when, when it completely occludes the urethral lumen, it's called complete urethral structure. With, with that fibrosis occurring and then that, that narrowing, there's subsequently diminished flow of urine from the um, from the urinary system, and then there's partial accumulation of urine in the in the proximal to the injury or proximal to that structure, and that will lead to dilatation of the urethra proximal to that injury. And that urethra proximal to the injury, proximal to the injury is called proximal urethra. And some of the features you see in investigations. And in this pressure, if this urine accumulation of, of continues, there will increase in pressure proximal to the structure and that can then affect the bladder, whereby the patient start having trabeculations. It can further um, Traveculation simply means that the muscle fibers are, com are pumping together, then there could be an indentation called the diverticulum or, or, the, or, or, or the be blowing out of the bladder, what's called circulations. If this further, if this pressure still further in continues that with that intervention, that back pressure effect, that back pressure can also move forward to dilate the ureter, causing hydroureta, and ultimately it can the pressure can get to the kidney causing hydronephrosis and ultimately renal failure. Again, we talk about we talk about the trabeculations, the circulations, and the diverticular and diverticular formation. And we've also talk about the hydrogen the high height of course. Then also to this also because of that impedance to of urinary fluid is urinary stasis. 
And when there's urinary stasis, it gives opportunity for microorganisms to proliferate, and then the, this patient will keep having recurrent urinary tract infection. Urinary tract infection can be classified either as partial or complete. Partial simply means that there's continuation of flow of the urine, but at a diminished rate. Complete simply means that there's a total interruption of urine flow. It could be classified as single or multiple. Single means that just only one urinary tract structure as present in that individual. Multiple simply means that multiple urinary tract structures present in that individual. Urinary tract structure can also be classified as either congenital or acquired. Congenital simply means the patient is born with it, and acquired simply means the patient got that urinary structure in life. Okay, we said the commonest part of of the urethra to have urethra structure is the, is the bubble urethra. The next is the pendulous urethra and the other is the glandular urethra. And the glandular urethra is usually the last. For like MCQ, the judge asks, where does someone pass a urethra catheter and develop structure? Where commonly with, with the structure will be usually at the bubble urethra. And the reason we talk about is the angulation and dilatation. This is for MCQ purpose. Structure common falling instruments commonly occur in the bubble urethra. Structure commonly occur on that MCQ question, structure commonly occur in the bubble urethra. That MCQ question is the uh, commonest if effective cause of of a uh, urethral structure is gonorrhea. That questions that can occur. Then how do you diagnose this patient? Diagnosis is really from history, and when you examine the patient, I want to investigate the patient. In the history, the history of suggestive or progressive decrease in urine, in urine stream, there will be history of improvement of urinary stream upon straining. That means there's diminution of urine flow. When the person strains, the urine flow increases. This differentiates it from that Obstructum, this differentiates from obstruction caused by benign prostatic hypertrophy. Both of them will have the progressive diminution of urinary stream. However, for BPH, upon straining, urine stream does not improve. But in urinary, in urethral tissue, upon straining, urine um, stream improves. All both of them will have frequency, hesitancy, dribbling. Again, um, um, for urethral structure, then we have forking of urine, our, and then we also have splaying of urine, which may be absent or may be present in BPA. But commonly, you see forking of urine as splaying of urine in, in, um, in BPH. Sorry, in a urethral structure. Again, the, again, the, the distinguishing factor between BPH and 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 the urethral structure is that in urethral, in both of them, there's, they have progressive diminution of urinary stream. I mean, the patient will tell you that before, I, if I go to, if I go to urine, urinate, it takes me like two seconds to urinate. Now it takes me like four seconds before I start urinating. However, for the urethral structure, what you also get in addition is that, that is if you ask them, when you strain, does the urine stream improve? If the answer is yes, they are dealing with urethral structure. If the answer is no, they are dealing with PPH. On that distribution factor against the age, common urethral uh, structure is found in young people, usually within the age of 25 to 45 to 50 to 60. PPH is common in the middle to the to the to the elderly. That's another that factor you can differentiate them. Then urethral structure, they may have forking of urine as plain of urine. Then, we, then you can also get history of trauma, the history of STD. Commonly, the, the history of STD may not be remarkable if you are not if you don't ask about it. The STD usually will be about 15 to 20 years ago, not recent STD. So the patient, especially for gonorrhea, gonor, uh, um, um, from, especially for structure caused by gonorrhea, they may have had the gonorrhea 20 to 15 to 20 years prior to the development of structure. So you ask them, if the patient, if, if the patient is like 40 years, you ask the patient, by the time you are within 10, 
within the age of 15 and 30 years, do you have STI? Do you have sexually transmitted infection that you treated or you didn't treat? If you say treated, do you treat, do you treat it properly? You want to ask those ones. And if the answer is yes, you are dealing with infective or inflammatory retritis. Then the issue of urethral instrumentation, this one is usually acute. Usually they will have come within six months to one year after the development of, after the use of urethral instrumentation. Commonly, urethral catheterization, the uh, urethral um, surgeries, such as transurethral resection of the prostate and vaginal repairs. Again, this, this individual, some, some of them have, may have history of of introduction of foreign bodies into the urethra, like, like I said previously, for sexual gratifications. There are some individuals that they have their sexual satisfaction or cause from 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 um, introduction of foreign objects into the urethra. So you want to ask about those history history. And once you find those history. Is an indication that this patient may have urethral structure. This is true with urinary symptoms and indication, an indication that it has urethral structure. If the patient is passing stones, complete that he used to see stones in his urine, and the patient is having progressive diminution of urine, improved by straining, then you are dealing with urethral structure. If there's issue of tuberculosis, as evidenced by chronic cough, contact depression with chronic cough, and drenching and sweat. Okay, you may deal with your transition. There are also some malignant causes of your transitions. So if you have history of the family history of those malignant causes of your transitions and weight loss, then that will be an indication. Then you want to get history of in the um, decrease in the quality of life of the patient, uh, history of urinary tract infections, history of abscesses, which may be scrotal, history of fistula, the history of suggestive of urinary impairment. And this will, be, this will be evidence as puffiness of eyes, loin pain, loin swelling, bilateral pedal edema. Then we want to get history of drugs that have been taken prior to presentation and co. Examination, general examination, which include clinical study of the patients, among others. I want to bore you with this information. I'll, move, I'll just move past this. Investigation, this way I want to a little bit dwell in the a little bit for you. Um, the investigation to confirm your diagnosis is called retrograde urethrogram plus micturating cysto urethrogram. That is the diagnosis. That that's the investigation. The radiologic investigation to confirm your diagnosis. This is a retrograde urethrogram of a urethral structure. How do I know? You can see the the um can the the, the the delivery cannula here, you could see it here. And this usually will be the, the penis. If you look very well, you could actually see the penis. It's the penis. But what distinguishing factor is, you see, if you only see the urethral cannula, this um, urethral cannula, there's a name for the cannula, I can't remember right now. Then you didn't see this flow, this contrast, then it suddenly stops. Then you are dealing with a urethral structure. You can see the urethra. This is the this is the penna urethra. It, it, this is the boba urethra. You can see the curving. At this point, there's a structure here. But then this structure is partial because you could start with that some contrast if flow past it. If it's a complete urethral structure, you will not see this contrast here. You just see it ends here. Then it's a normal study. You see this contrast flow into the bladder. The bladder is somewhere here. This is the bladder here. But there's no contrast in this. A normal urethra will have contrast in the uh, urethra up onto the bladder. The bladder is short somewhere here. Again, so this is where the structure is. Again, the, like I said, the investigation commonly is the, is the retrograde urethrogram. Then 
Plus, methylating sister urea sugar. How do you do methylating sister urea sugar? It's usually most times patients with urea sugar they may have come acutely and then patient acute condition may have been treated with a with a suprapubic catheter. So that suprapubic catheter the patient presents with you then pass a contrast sugar catheter into the bladder. For a normal urethra, the blood the, the contrast will flow from the bladder through to the urethra and out here. But for a patient that's having stricture, the complete urethra structure, the bladder, the contrast will just remain only in the bladder. For partial urethra structure, the contrast will flow. You see the narrowing, as you see here, down. So you have to do both, both tests to confirm your diagnosis. Other tests you can do is the International Prostate Systems um, Symptoms Score, the peak urine, urine flow rate, post voidal residual volume. I ureteroscopy is my I don't be bother with that, but what I will bother with is this ureterogram ureterogram and methylating system ureterogram. Is he's going to come out to your exam? This X-ray will be very vital. They will show you an X-ray of this. They will ask what test is this. If you see this cannula here, and you are seeing the ureter, this is retrograde ureterogram. If you see contrast here, and then you are not seeing any stuff here. I didn't see this cannula, you're dealing with MC methylating system urethrogram. Again, if you don't see this, if you don't see this cannula, and then you see the contrast coming from the bladder down or here, I think you're dealing with methylating system urethrogram. So what the complications are this. So the treatment will be temporary measures and specific measures. Temporary measures will include use of passage of specific catheter. To, like I said, the patient usually will come as in retention. So in those instances, you want to pass a intrapubic catheter to, to drain the urine. Then for patients to show, you can, for your, for your level, please, for your exam, when patient comes with urethral suture, commonly from trauma, like road traffic accident, you don't pass a catheter. You pass a intrapubic catheter. This urethral suture catheter for partial suture is usually for post level. So I will just leave that. For a patient that has a, a that has urethral structure from trauma, you can pass an SPC. How how do you define? How will you know this patient is having urethral structure from trauma? Patient has urethral accident, then has fracture of the pelvis. As evident by patient cannot raise his legs, and there is pain in in the in the in the pelvic in the pelvic region, and there is positive compression tenderness of the pelvis. Are most significant that you see blood at the tip of the urethra. Once you see that, and the patient is complaining that he cannot urinate, so do a cystostomy. That's for the exam purpose, but we do know that with experience and you can attempt urethral catheterization if you think it's a partial structure at first attempt. Once you fail, you then um, prepare for, for SPC. And they are passing the, if you're passing the urethral catheter at first attempt for a partial structure, you use the smallest possible catheter, like size 16, to pass a, to pass a catheter. The specific measures to treat this um, structures include dilatations, endoscopic derivation, and internal urethrotromy. I will not want to go into that. I just tell you that specific, what you can use to treat usual structures are dilatations and endoscopic derivation and internal urethrotromy. Other surgery you can do, we have what's called meatotomy and meatoplasty. Then you have urethroplasty. I will not want to go into all this. Again, the treatment you can give for urethral surgery, we have dilatation, serial dilatation, we have endoscopic direct internal urethrotomy, we have urethroplasty. The so current trend in treatment of urethral structure includes your use of urethral stent, laser urethrotomy, and these are the means of preventing urethral structure. Once more, thank you very much. So, do you have any question before end it, before end it for today? Um, the slide for the prevention and for the complication, please. Come Sorry, in. I'm not hearing you. Could you just... Oh, okay. Let me put my earpiece on so I can, I can hear you. Okay. 
Okay, now go ahead. The slide for the complication and the prevention. Please, can we go back to it? Okay, fine. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So these are the complications. You could have urinary tract infection, hematoma, fistula formation, urethra calculi, even carcinoma of the urethra are called the council for then the prevention or the primary prevention, which include public enlightenment, primary prevention, use of protective barrier during second course, um, avoiding the vaginal dodging, avoiding harmful sexual practices, use of safety wire. We are in the workplace, timely treatment of infection, exposing factor, timely presentation for definitive treatment, among others. So these are the prevention preventive measures. It's complications for retro structures, not Sorry? complications for retro Hello. structures, not uh, for retroplasty. Come again, sorry. The complications for retro retro structures, not retroplasty. Okay, well, this are also the complications of retro structures also. There are also complications of it. Then you earlier in the lecture you said something about the common sites for the retro structures. The list is it proximal? The, the commonest site is the boba urethra. And the yeah. list site is the glandular urethra. Glandular urethra is the list site. Okay. You've passed it. Yes. Well, let, let me find that place again. You passed it already. No, the pillar is the, the, the so this is the most common site, is the bobus boba urethra. Then the least site is the glandular urethra. Okay. I got you. Meanwhile, it. this... Okay, sir? I got it. Thank you, sir. Okay. This slide is in slide share. You could get them. I'm trying to upload most the lectures, all of them in slide shares. So you could get from slide share. I think I will, I will share my slide share stuff there in the, in the forum where you could go and see all these lectures. Okay, is there any other question again? No, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Is anybody having questions before we call it a day? Okay, thank you very much for today's lecture.